Hello, VPL fans, coaches, and people who are just here to see what the hell this is about. Um, welcome to your Valhalla Pokemon League post-draft power rankings. I am Ashton Akai, um, and I'm really excited to be here. Um, this took me a little bit longer to get put together than I initially wanted it to. I mean, the first round of battles, a lot of them have already happened, um, but... Uh, I did finally get some time uh, to sit down, look at all of these these wonderful teams that the our coaches have drafted, and um, and uh, and rank them. So um, basically, some some stuff before we begin. Firstly, this is just my opinion. Do not like you know if you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm full of it, that you're well you know, you know that's you're well within your rights to tell me so. Uh, I won't take offense. Um, and this is just, this is not based on the coach's abilities, this is not based on anything except my opinion of the teams as they current, as they stood post-draft. Um, after the uh, changes, uh, the little grace period that, that the um, the coaches got to make uh, swaps uh, very early on. So, um, as you can see there, there are three teams on the screen in front of you, but I haven't put them in order. Um, this is just the league spreadsheet. I haven't prepared any special... Uh, Special graphics. Um, if you're looking at anything different, then um, Sky's probably put something over the top. Um, so I will list off the teams just for everybody's benefit, just in case you're not seeing the teams in front of you. But basically, um, I'm just going to kind of uh, we'll use that for the the league spreadsheet for reference, um, and uh, we will go from there. So um, this was a real toughie because you have to take into account the league's unique um, the league's unique. Thing, um, which is the snipe action, um, allowing a coach. And let me see if I get this right, because um, the exactly how it worked changed as the draft went on. Um, it allows you to basically, if somebody further up that round um, takes something that you wanted, you can use your snipe action uh, in that round. If that person hasn't already been sniped, I want to say. Um, correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section below. Um, or it's just each person only gets one per round. I can't actually remember. Um, so, if somebody takes something you want further up in the round, you can snipe them, and then that effectively takes the place of your draft, and then they get to choose again. Um, so, of course, with snipe action being uh, an option, um, messing, which was which was pretty heavily used, if I remember correctly, um, there will definitely be teams where there will be a little bit, bit of a synergy hit for that, I think, because you'd be forced to come up with two, even, you know, multiple uh, substitutions for a month in a round. So, um, you know, like more so than usual. So, um, you know, the, I'm, I'm going to try not to be too hard on the team is basically what I'm saying. So, um, let's just go ahead and, uh, and jump right in, shall we? I'm just going to make sure I have the correct numbers here because I'm full of it. Okay. So, um, I'm starting from the bottom, uh, the number 12 team, um, unfortunately for him, uh, I, I put Deneki uh, and his um, Roseren Fork. I probably said that wrong. Go me. But um, Dan's team. Basically, um, this was the one that stood out to me when I was flicking through. The, I was looking through the teams, kind of you know, t making my initial checks, looking at the, the different cores, looking at kind of the synergy, looking at you know their rockers and all of that kind of stuff. Um, Dan's team. Well, for a start, he's got no steel. Um, which means no fairy steel dragon, and I think a steel would have helped him out a little bit here because he does have a few prevalent weaknesses. Um, he's got more, plenty of rockers, like, none of the, that's not the problem. He does only have Golbat as removal, though, which, um, the team isn't super weak, but he's got a team that it contains, you know, a couple of weaknesses. His, his rocker, his remover is weak itself, um, and a lot of stuff that doesn't really want to be switching in repeatedly on rocks, like Zorark. Um, because one of the best ways to hide Zorark is, um, of course, you need to be able to keep rocks off the field to be able to hide Zorark. Because, say he wants to try to hide it as his thunderous eye, um, he won't be able to effectively do that once rocks are up. Because then it's, it's pretty clear what it is. Um, I, so, I mean, I probably would have looked to pick up one more form of hazard removal on his team. Um, the thing, the reason that I've got him down here, uh, and the reason that I he stood out to me is kind of the team that's gone bottom is just the overwhelming kind of type uh, presence of a lot of typing duplications but not typing duplications that are good ones typing duplicate duplications that i'm not entirely sure about and typing duplications that create shared weaknesses so like his first three picks manaphy thunderous eye azumarill 
initial immediately it's like i'm like okay so he had manaphy so why did he get a zoom roll you know there, there was only round three i'm sure he could have picked up a different fairy um somewhere else in the draft or you know not gone for manaphy round one um because then you know the zoom roll and manaphy don't help the, there's no no synergy there um at the top of the lock, his electric type doesn't even resist electric, so those first three mons are heavily electric weak. They're also, you know, two out of three of them are fairly grass weak. Um, you know, so it's like, um, he's got a fairly prevalent um, electric weakness, because I, I want to say he, he's got a resistance in Gorgeist, uh, he's got an immunity in Mega Sceptile, and an immunity in Mamoswine, but then <laughs> those t those guys are, are, two out of three of those are, are weak to ice, which is something else which he's prevalently weak to. Yes, he's got Manaphy and Azumarill, um, and Infernape, but then again, like, he's got these stacked resistances, but then he's also got the stacked weaknesses. And then, for example, if you look at, like, Manaphy, um, well, like, Manaphy, Azumarill, and Infernape, um, only one of those really wants to be, like, a, like, Infernape isn't the super, bul the bulkiest mod out there. Azumarill wants to be run more offensively, and if you're running any kind of belly drum set, you know, you don't want to be switching out on attacks a lot. Man, if he can be bulky, but doesn't have the reliable recovery outside of, you know, Rain Dan the Raindance Rest set, which is sort of re reliable. Um, so again, not Mons which really want to be switching in, like, constantly. He does have one of the better Ice types in the format, being Mamoswine. But, like, when you look at his team, I'm just a little bit afraid of what a Weavile would do to him, honestly. Um, because pretty much his entire team loses to the, like, Ice Dark um, hurts his team a lot. Uh, that comes back around to it. Um, Dark is another thing which he's very, very weak to. Yeah, he's got a re resistances in Infernape and Azumarill, but um, he's got a number and Zoroark. But again, they're fairly most of them are frailish. Um, and this is this is why I've got him bottom. Like he's got a lot of Mons which are really good individually, but um, I don't like when you stack stacking a team that stacks weaknesses like this. I feel like it's it's kind of easy to take advantage of. Um, and I mean. I don't, it's not like, I don't th see the real point to the way he's put it together. Um, just, I know he made, it was actually worse um, until he made a couple of changes. The Reggie Rock and the Zoroark pick I like, um, changes I like, but um, he's just not, the synergy, I don't know, he's got like a lot of stacked weaknesses and a lot of stacked resistances, and it just, it makes it very, I guess, linear, the, w the way he's going to play, you know, he's got to bring, and he's got to really team build carefully, because like, He's going to struggle to bring, say, Manaphy and Azumarill together, for example. Um, that sort of thing. So, um, you know, not a draft that I'm a fan of. It'd be interesting to see how he makes it work, because, I mean, he's got a lot of speed. You know, his speed tiers are, are, are pretty good. He's got a lot of power. Um, stuff like Azumarill and, that, and that can just beat teams by themselves. So, same with Manaphy. But um, as a team, I don't think it's, it's that well built, basically. Like, he's got a lot of individually good mods. I love Gorgeist. I like Regirock here. Um, but... You know, he's just got a lot of typing duplications, which mean he's got a lot of shared weaknesses, and I think he's gonna he's gonna struggle with that this season. So, um, next, our next up, I need to move the screen, so let's just go ahead and do that. Um, next up in eleventh, I've got Rudy and his Chattanooga Chestnuts. Now, um, this is where things start to get a little, little interesting. There were kind of groups of teams that were fairly similar um, as far as where I would rank them. Um, but this is another one, the reason I've got it down here, it's another one that has kind of typing duplications causing some synergy issues. Um, you know, he's got a lot of, like, steel types, for example. He's got a lot, like, he does have, you know, your, your common cores. Firewater Grass being Talonflame or Heatran, Venusaur, and Gastrodon or Mega Blastoise. Fairy Dragon Steel being Mr. Mime, Dragonite, and Heatran, Bronzong, or Magneton. But this is exactly the issue. Like, um, you know, Magneton, Bronzong, Heatran, Mega Blastoise, Gastrodon, Venusaur, Nidoking, uh, Crest, Bronzong. He's got a lot of stuff that I'm not entirely sure about. Um, he also only has Bla Blastoise is his only hazard removal on a team with Talonflame and Dragonite, which is not never great. Um, he's got a couple of he's got plenty of rockers, but um, then I just I think this is another one that because of the way he's drafted, he's gonna have a hard time actually like building good like he's gonna have a hard time building teams just because like you know um, Mega Blastoise and Gastrodon like um, shared grass weakness so then you have to bring something which deals with grass so oh you know I don't know Heatran and then it, like it becomes very predictable kind of how he has to put his teams together to deal with his stacked weaknesses because um, this is another one like um, you know things like ground um, other than crests and you know levitate bronze on hurt him a lot um, 
Ice does a decent number on his team, although he does have the Mega Blastoise. Um, but I want to and the Heatran. I want to say those are his only resistance. Oh, and Magneton and Bronzong and Hariyama. Okay, so maybe not Ice. Um, but uh, he's got some stacked weaknesses, which cause some shared, um, you know, some stacked typings, which mean which means some shared weaknesses. Um, yes, he's got like answers to those weaknesses, like for example, Fire being a weakness, um, a pretty prevalent one. Um, if he doesn't run Heatproof Bronzong, uh, but then he's got like Gastronon, Hariyama, um, Dragonite, and then of course Heatran, but then Heatran being the uh, kind of obvious switch into fire, you know, anything that kind of has fire and earthquake um, starts causing him real issues. So th that's why I have him down at 11th. Um, like, this is another one that'll be interesting to see how he actually uses it, how he puts his teams together, but because um, I know, I, especially because I know he's been kind of out of the draft game for a little while, um, but uh, I feel like he's going to have some issues, especially. Um, the last thing that I wanted to point out. He's got a huge speed gap um, in between Talonflame, and I think Mr. Mime is his next fastest, which um, is very, very abusable. Um, you know, all those base 100s and like just over 100s that, um, well, not base 100s won't be able to, to, but those things that are kind of just faster than 100 or maybe some base 100 scarfers, he could potentially look to run a, a, an attack boosting nature, and then all of his bulk suddenly becomes a little, little bit less bulky. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting team. Uh, and I like the, you know, some of the pickups, like the Mr. Mime, and of course I'm a fan of Crest, but um, I'm not sure how he's going to use it, um, and that's mainly why he's down here. Um, so, next up is actually right next to him, um, Turbo Blaze and his Turbo Drills. Um, this is another funny one. This is I was trying to decide which one I wanted um, 11th uh, more. Um, in, it was basically Rudy and, and Turbo for 10, 11, um, but I wasn't entirely sure which one I liked. I wanted down at 11 more, but then the more I looked at Turbo's team, um, the more I think it probably just about edges edges out um, edges out Rudy's. So some 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 stuff. Um, he's got you know a nice some nice options for Fire, Water, Grass, a Mega Bomb, Snow, like Tentacruel, Blaziken, no Fairy, um, and then I started looking at. The stuff that he's the kind of standard check box stuff. Um, he's only got one really reliable rocker. Um, I mean, he's got T-Tar, which can be a rocker, but it doesn't want to be a rocker all the time because one of T-Tars, I think, his strengths is when it's flexible, when it can do a lot of different things. Because T-Tar is a mon which can fit a lot of different kind of roles, and you don't want to rely on it um, to go to be setting up your rocks every week. Um, and the next good drill, of course, which again doesn't want to be a rocker really. Um, he's got some odd typing duplications. Like um, that, I wasn't I'm not entirely sure about um, things like the um, picking up Polytoad and then getting Tentacruel a bit further down. Like I don't know what that does for his team, especially when he's got Sand, um, so, because he's got like Sand, Rain, and Snow. It's like a crazy weather team. Um, and then he does have stuff to take advantage of it, like the Victory Bell and the Excadrill. But then um, I just I don't know. Like um, he's got Meg why did he get Mega Bomb of Snow and then nothing which benefits, no you know, nothing which really enjoys the hail. Um, and then pick up Victory Bell later. I'm just, I'm not sure about it. Um, like again, he's got Mega Bomb Snow, and then he's got some Fire Switch Ins for sure. Um, but uh, one thing that he has managed to pick up is a pretty heavy, heavy ground weakness. Um, because I want to say, I think his only sort of thing which enjoys taking ground type attacks is the, is the, um, the Uxie. Um, so that's, that's something which I think will definitely be an issue for him. Yes, he's got a scary ground type of his own in Excadrill, but he doesn't want to switch in on ground types. Um, he's also got a bit of a flying weakness uh, when, you know, Excadrill, because like Excadrill, of course, switches in on flying but doesn't enjoy Talonflame. Tyranitar switches in on flying but doesn't enjoy, you know, say, fighting coverage um, or what's so, like a natural gift Talonflame um, I think would give him a hard time. But um, so because of the way he's kind of built his team up, um, like I'm not entirely like I said I'm not entirely sure what Mega Bomb Snow is even doing on his team like I, I can he was trying clearly trying to do like a weather thing um, but then I just I don't really like it very much um, I mean the reason it's kind of sitting above Rudy's team is because as a whole um, it has fewer issues with it I mean like um, you know aside from kind of the ground weakness and a cup the lack of sort of a reliable rocker. Um, it's, it's, it's reasonably solid, um, you know, he's got um, a couple of, of ways to remove hazards and no weaknesses, I don't think. Um, so it's, it's, it's not a horrible team at all. Um, some really interesting speeds. 
uh, with Lightheart being um, just over base 100 and then Tentacruel being at base 100. Um, and then I don't think anything else he hits anywhere near base 100 except um, Excadrill at base 88, uh, Pikachu at base 90, I want to say. I want to say. I think there's something, it's something like that. So, like, his speeds aren't bad, um, but I just, I don't know what to think about this team, honestly. Um, some cool pickups. I like Oxy. I like the Blaze Blaziken. But um, I'm not entirely sure what, um, how he's going to use the team, basically. This is kind of the third where I look at it and it's just like, eh, I don't know. Like, some of those mons just seem, a couple of them seem really out of place. Like, if he was going to go, you know, he very easily could have gone Sand, um, picked up something else, a, a different mon there than the Politoed. Um, and just gone for a, a, a Mega which enjoys Sand, and you'd have a pretty threatening looking team. But um, as it is, he's got, you know, all the weather, um, and I guess time will tell uh, if that's going to work out for him. But, um, you know, he's my 10. So um, at number 9, I have got Mad Junk and the Bearded Be I cannot, can't pronounce it, DMs. Okay. Um, BMs, yeah, BMs. So this is where I think the teams I think started to improve a little bit. Um, kind of the ones, the next sort of group um, that I had trouble kind of uh, dividing. Um, you know, he's got the two kind of popular cores: in Fairy Dragon Steel being Slurpuff, Cling Cling, and then Men's or Dragalge, um, and a strong, slightly better Firewater Grass core in Megmortar, Keldeo, and Rotom Mo. Um, but then that's kind of where the good stuff ends. Um, he's going to rely on defensive Mew a lot, I think, just because if you look at his team, a lot of it is just kind of offense, 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 offense. Um, so it's also I think he's only it's his only really reliable rocker because I think his only other rocker is Mega Aerodactyl, which doesn't really want to be a rocker because um, it, it obviously regular Aerodactyl does play the kind of hazards lead role, um, but I, I don't think that's what really what Mega Aerodactyl wants to be doing all the time. Um, he does have a few forms of removing hazards, which is good because he does have a couple of weaknesses. Um, you know, Defog Salamence, I think Defog Aerodactyl, um, and then Rapid Spin Hitmonchan and Defog Mew. But um, he's going to be, you know, he's going to be heavily relying, I think, on defensive Mew, just because a, it's only his only dependable rocker, and it's b, it's probably his best. It, that and um, Rapid Spin Hitmonchan are probably his best forms of hazard removal. Um, the other thing is he doesn't have a lot of reliable bulk outside of Mew. Um, a Salamence can be bulky uh, if it wants to be, but like, it's not. So it wants to be able to t t tear teams apart. Um, Sableye is really only bulky because of Prankster. Um, regular Sableye does not have a lot of bulk to it. Um, if you can hit it really, really hard, like on the Switch, and it has a hard time. Um, and then you just Rotom Mo doesn't have any reliable recovery. Um, Dragalge hates being hit on the physical side, and then um, Hitmonchan again doesn't enjoy being hit on the physical side. So like. He's got doesn't have a lot of reliable bulk, um, which could come, be an issue for him, I think. But um, other than that, like his speed too, he's got a lot of speed. Um, if anything, he's a little bit top heavy on the speed. Like he's got all of his cores. I'll be interested to see Kling Kling. Um, you know, he's got plenty of hazard control. Oh, plenty of you know a couple of ways to set up hazards, um, and he doesn't have that kind of. The issue that some of the so he doesn't have that prevalent issue that some of the other teams had up till now, which was kind of a lot of mons with secondary typings that caused, you know, um, sort of major shared weakness. He's got a bit of an ice issue, um, but uh, he doesn't, you know, other than like Caldeo Hitmonchan, um, which is kind of okay, and um, Salamence Dragalge, which again is kind of okay because you're probably not going to try to bring them together. Um, I don't know, you probably aren't. Um, like his team is just about like it, it's kind of the reason I've got it here up here in um, in ninth instead of down like in 10 11 or 12 it's just because it, it feels a little bit more solid to me I mean it has its issues um, but we're down in you know ninth out of 12 um, the teams down here are still probably going to have their issues um, but all in all like I th it'll be interesting to see how he uses it um, I'll be interested it's kind of unfortunate that Mew's on another team where it's gonna be forced to play defense a lot but, um, you know, it's, it's a good mod at that, um, and I think if he builds with it correctly, like, I can see how this team could work. Um, but, uh, again, you know, it, it's, um, it's hard to judge exactly without, um, you know, judging on the players because, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know, um, how he's going to, uh, how he's going to build with this, so. Um, at number eight, 
we have got Quill and his Juventes. Um, now, Quill's team is an interesting one. Like, in, and I say interesting, uh, when I say interesting, I mean interesting. Um, this is probably one of the more where the team started to get a bit more solid, um, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. Um, like, he's got a Firewater Grass Core in Leafeon, Typhlosion, and Vaporeon, but um, I'm just really not sure about the Leafeon pick. I mean, it could be good. Um, we'll see. He's only got one Hazard Remover and a Hazard Weak Team, which is the, my big issue with it. Um, he's got plenty of Rockers. Like, that side is good. He's got a really nice um, Fairy Dragon Steel Core in a Dredagon, Mega Agron, and Clefable. Um, but he, like, it's kind of, it's a funny team because like, um, with only one hazard remover in a hazard weak team, it means he's going to bringing, be bringing sand slash a lot. He's going to have to bring sand slash every week, basically. Um, and he's going to have to do a good job of protecting his team because yes, he's got a couple of magic guard users, but things like, you know, um, Typhlosion, things like Weavile, they, things like even Electabuzz, Volt Switching Around do not enjoy, um, the presence of rocks. And if somebody just, the, the problem with sand slash, and I've kind of found this in the PPL already better as kind of a pivot than as a um, as a straight up wall um, and if it doesn't have any reliable recovery so anybody who pressures the sand slash and gets rid of it um, early is going to have a much easier time against Quill's team. Um, the only other thing that is rather interesting, um, he's got a really big speed like gap. Um, you know we've got Weavile, Alexander, Sonic Fast, Ming Xiao, who's again fast, um, and then Typhlosion but then after that um, I think we've got Electabuzz, uh, who's around about there, um, and it just, it seemed, it really drops off, so, like, he's got stuff which is kind of sonic fast, and then nothing for a while, um, which is never exactly ideal, um, I want to say Cliff Babel is a good distance, is, yeah, I think he's got, like, a pretty good gap there, so things that are kind of, like, wall breaker speed, you know, set, like, 80, 90 speed, are going to be able to potentially run, you know, attack boosting natures on his team and really hurt him because aside from Clefable and of course Vaporeon, um, his team on the whole lacks recovery. Um, so he, you know, he's going to be I, like, it's not a horrible team, not by any stretch of the imagination, but I feel like he's going to be forced into a particular structure like every week. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how he plays with that because like, that's never something that I've thought you really want to be in draft. Um, like, this is probably the first team, I think, that has no, uh, real, like, unnecessary typing duplications or, or things along that line, but, um, and, like, if he had a bit more hazard control, I would be much, feel much better about the team, but, um, like, I think hazards are gonna be his bugbear all season long, um, and with a, a lot of his mons being, a lot of his walls, things like Agron, um, which, of course, can be a, a wall plus ow, um, Agron, Spiritomb, Dredagon, um, Sand Slash, not having reliable recovery, it just, they don't enjoy the presence of hazards, um, so it's like if somebody gets hazards up and knocks up the Sand Slash, he's just, he's gonna have a bad time, um, he's gonna be forced to be passing wishes with Vaporeon and Clefable, um, all over the place just to try to keep his team healthy, and, um, that's just, it's, I think people are gonna try to exploit that every week, honestly, um, so, you know, not a horrible team by any stretch of the imagination, but it will be interesting to see how he plays around that. Um, at number seven, we have got Sky, um, the and his Scandinavian Stoutlands, the founder of the BPL. Um, now, Sky's team is an interesting one. Uh, he's got a Firewater Grass Core in with Delphox, Jealous, and Trevenant. Um, of course, all three of them have Dark Ghost weaknesses. Um, fire, his Fairy Steel um, Dragon is pretty solid, being uh, Cabalian, Mega DNC, and Latias. He's got reasonable speed tiers. Um, and like, but uh, then it kind of, you start looking at his issues, like he's, he's another one which has some stacked weaknesses. Um, he's going to rely on Latias, I think, for hazard removal a lot, um, because it's his only form of hazard removal, and his team does, like he's got DNC, which can bounce, stop things from going up, but then DNC also is very, very weak to, um, it isn't the bulkier, the bulkiest um, Mon, so um, you don't want to be relying on that to keep hazards off the field when you've got stuff like Delphox, Tornadus, T, uh, and Scolipede. He's got three, you know, three good rocker, three rockers, although I'd only probably call one of them reliable, um, being Pillow Swine. Like, Cabalion can be a decent rocker, lock, Rock Sleet as well, but it, like, knowing Sky, it's not something which he's going to want to do. I mean, it's not something which it is really going to want to do on this team either. Um, and then, of course, Mega Dancy, but Mega Rocks, Mega Dancy, you don't want to do that. Um, because like I said, it's not the bulkiest out there. 
like his team is if it wasn't for the like I know I'm not talking about the player skill here but this look it looks like a very sky team um, very very offensive but uh, I think this time I, I, I take issue with the fact that he's kind of stacked weaknesses. This is another one um, which kind of has stacked weaknesses and then a few things which resist those weaknesses but um, maybe aren't the greatest switch-ins constantly to them. So like t take Dark. Um, he's got Trevenant who's weak to Dark. Um, Jellison who's weak to Dark. Delphox who's weak to Dark. Latios who's weak to Dark. And he's got Mega DNC which isn't really a switch into Dark plus coverage. Um, Hydreigon again Dark plus coverage. Um, like fighting coverage or steel coverage, you can hit both of them pretty hard. Um, Cabalion, you know, dark plus ground or fighting. Uh, Drapion, uh, dark plus ground. Like, he's got, he's got, it's another one, like, I was talking about before. He's got stacked weaknesses and then stacked resistances, but those res resistances really aren't great switch-ins, um, because they can very easily be beaten by, like, this that stat plus coverage. Um, but then again, I don't know... Like, this is why um, the sky is only is as far down as he is, just because, like, I know that that won't bother Sky too much because he's a very offensive player. He's not one who's going to be switching in on things a lot. Um, but, um, you know, I'm not... The reason he's down here is because, um, you know, I, if you take take Sky out of the equation, you know, this isn't this is a team that I think will struggle... Um, like he's, it's gonna have to be one. Games are gonna have to be won with it through offense um, rather than defense, um, because like, like I said, um, combined weaknesses um, are gonna be an issue for him. I think particularly kind of dark plus fighting um, and ice as well. Ice is ice is a bit of a problem. Um, so, like he's got a he's got a very mammo weakness, but um, extremely mammo weakness. In fact, wow, I only just saw that. But uh, either way, like. Take, taking it, that's why it's as far down as it is. I think Sky honestly will probably play with this team pretty well because I've never seen him struggle with this kind of like this is this is the type of team very offensive that he, he plays well with. Um, but you know I have to uh, have to rank him without consideration of that. Um, I imagine that he'll do. Um, I, I can see him doing reasonably well with the team, um, provided he doesn't come up against anything which can kind of bulky, which can kind of take hits and dish it out again with the right typings against his team. Um, so next up, we've got Josh uh, and Slateport Vale. Now Josh's team is an interesting one. Um, he's got like solid Fairy Dragon Steel and Firewater Grass cores. And um, uh, hold on, I've got that junk there. I was about to say, um, you know, he's got solid cores in um, like Garchomp, Aroma, and Jirachi, and then Torterra Volcanion. Torterra Volcanion is particularly good because, of course, Volcanion four times resist, resist the ice, which really hits Torterra. Um, he does have an, a few four times weaknesses, like Aurorus, um, Torterra, um, Vulcan, uh, not Vulcan, uh, Garchomp, um, but uh, he does have the, he has the appropriate stuff and just kind of some straight up bulk to take it on. Um, his only hazard control on the team is Crobat, which is less than ideal on a team with Aurorus, Jir um, Rufflet, and Vulcanion. So that kind of creates what is a bit of a hazard weakness when your only hazard removal um, on a team with hazard weaknesses is weak to hazard itself. Um, he does have plenty of rockers, although he's got a pretty big speed drop off after the Jirachi. Um, so again, this is somebody who's got like a fair bit of stuff. You know, he's got a few things above and right around 100 and then kind of drops off a bit. Um, so there's a gap in there which, which could definitely be exploited. Um, the only other thing is I think he's going to rely on defensive chomp a lot. Um, because it, like he's got Aromatisse who is sort of bulky and Blissey who's of course hella bulky, but like Aromatisse is kind of like it can be physically defensive, but it's not out and out this the most physically bulky mon. Um, like it um, against like a really strong wall breaker who can hit it um, hard, especially super effectively. It's not the greatest option. So like I think he's going to be forced into defensive chomp a lot because his team doesn't have a lot of natural physical bulk. Um, it's got plenty of special bulk, um, but just not a lot of natural physical bulk. Um, he's up here this high just because I think his team is fairly solid. Um, it's got a couple of issues, but then again, most drafts do when you actually dig down and um, examine them. Um, the, I'm, the kind of unnecessary typing duplications are starting to disappear, which is nice. Josh does have a couple, but um, they're kind of... they're less important like healer less being normal type and blissey um because he does have issue he does have nice answers to fighting um so all in all 
like a decent team. Um, I'll be interested to see what he use, what he does with it, particularly Mega Bennett, because we all know Josh is one for um, one for a gimmick, um, and Mega Bennett is like the gimmick Mega. Um, I mean, not in the sense that it's it's only a gimmick, but that it's, it's it has a lot of different very tricksy things it can do, and um, and uh, I'll be interested to see how Josh takes advantage of those. So at number five, we have got six foot hacks and uh, Leo and his Durham Dredagons. Now this is one of the first teams. I think this is a little bit more solid. Um, it's, it's, it's quite solid in fact. You know, he's got a good fire water grass core. Um, no fairy, which is kind of a, a, a point to take away because he doesn't really enjoy fairy. Um, his removal is Skunting and Latios, although I, that's not huge because he doesn't have a lot of weakness. He does have that Arc Nine, um, which is going to want to be defensive. I think some a lot of the time based on the structure of his team. But um, like this is another one, uh, and this is probably as a side effect in part uh, of the snipe action. I, I don't know. I wasn't paying close attention during the draft, but um, he's got only limited switch ins to a couple of things, and then uh, a couple of typings, and then um, like those switch ins also share a weakness. For example. Um, Registeel and Arcanine being his only really good switch into Fairy, um, so like both of them of course being weak to ground. Obviously, you know, both very Registeel in particular is extremely fat um, and can take ground type hits, um, but it's just it's it's not an ideal place to be because then you know you can pretty like his team doesn't enjoy ground anyway, um, other than like the Shaman the Lad and of course the Latios and Landris being immune. So you know something say example with Fairy plus ground um, could potentially put quite a bit of hurting on his team. Um, you know, he's got some solid speed tiers. I like that, you know, he has a nice easy drop from kind of Mega Lopunny, um, you know, Danger Greninja, Latios, and like, um, Shaman, Arcanine, and Lando. Like, it, it, it eases down quite nicely, um, through the 100s, so like, there's not a lot of really uh, exploitable, um, gap there. Uh, he's got plenty of, he's got a nice, you know, some nice defensive options, stuff like the Slow King Reg Registeel, um, Arcanine, that's, that's pretty solid with um, plenty of reliable rockers. Um, overall, I like the team. Um, this is the first one that I, I probably really kind of like the look of. Like, it's got a couple of issues, and um, I'm not sure about the Combuskin pick, but um, we'll see how what he does with it. Um, I mean, because he's already got a fire type in Arcanine and a fighting type in Megalop, so I'm not sure what the, if it was necessary, really. But um, then again, that was, their, that was their kind of NUPU pick, so, you know, um, fair enough, really. Um, he's also got, uh, obviously, the Greninja plus Slow King, which is eh, but, um, so he's just, you know, a couple of things to be careful with, with but, um, like, less sort of, prob like, obvious weakness than, um, kind of the teams in the, the earlier part of the power rankings. Um, and of course, I know that Leo knows what he's doing, so, um, but of course, that, that's basically why he's not, um, another one which isn't potentially a bit further up, because he does have those issues, um, and I've not actually seen him play myself. So, um, it'll be interesting to see how he uses that team this season. Um, next up, in num at number four, uh, I've got Freedomion and his Welshions. Um, this is probably the first... This is a really funny team for me to be ranking, um, because it was kind of like the first part of the draft, Frido was killing it. Um, like, Victini, Megasaur, Starmie, Sylveon, Crocodile. Um, even Tornadusai and Jolteon. But then it's like he kind of gave up and stopped caring about his draft. I don't know, or if he was just getting sniped or what. Um, his Firewater Grass Core is, is, I quite like the Firewater Grass Core. Um, and he, obviously Victini, Megasaur, and Starmie. Um, he, it does give him kind of a prevalent weakness to Dark though, um, which is a little bit less than ideal. Um, he does have a Fairy Dragon Steel Core of Sylveon, Mawile, and Flygon, which is not bad. Um, I feel like Starmie on his team is going to be pressured to spin more often than not because his only other hazard control is, um, is the Flygon on a team with Victini and Tornadus, so not ideal, um, especially if he wants to bring the Rhyperior um, as well, because you know then you've got the, the stacked ground type. He's got a few typing duplications that I don't entirely get. Um, in addition, you know, in like, um, like he's got Steel type. Um, no, like he's got the um, the fairy type Sylveon, then his steel type is Mawile. Um, so obviously that that one's less important because Mawile covers um, uh, the weaknesses of fairy. Um, but then he's got like you know Flygon, Rhyperior, um, and he's got like Rhyperior after he's already got Crocodile. I kind of would have liked to have seen um, Regirock maybe, and then a different steel type, um, especially because he's got Crocodile as well, so three ground types. Um, 
So again, stacked pipe, stacked weakness, plus then he's got like Victini and Flareon, which slips in on it, um, and Starmie, which is not ideal. Um, he does have a pretty notable weakness to Dark, um, in particular, uh, just because obviously his only switch-ins are Mawile, Crocodile, and Sylveon, so none of them, um, so like his, if you can find something with just coverage to hit, say, even two out of three of those, suddenly his switch-ins to Dark are going to be pretty limited. Um, which is not, so, I mean, he's got Primeape as well, but Primeape isn't particularly bulky, um, which is not a place you really want to be at all. Um, say something like a Zoroark uh, could give him a lot of trouble. Um, but all in all, like, this is kind of, it felt kind of like a draft of two halves to me. Like, he kind of, uh, like the first half or so, he was really, like, trying to build a solid team. And I mean, Victini, Megasaur, Starmie, Sylveon, Krypton, uh, Jolteon is pretty solid. Um, I don't like that Victini and the Victini and the Starmie on the team together, but other than that, um, fairly solid. And then after that, it was just like I, I'm. I think he he was trying to tick boxes, and I don't know. It lost a little bit of the the synergy that the first half did had. Um, but of course, he's up here uh, in number four, which uh, because I think he's probably one of the stronger teams. Um, like you know, Spec Sylveon is a threat. Victini is a threat. Um, he's got um that mega venusaur which we all know how fat mega venusaur can be um and you know wish support from flareon but um like it's just it, it's not quite um i just wasn't quite a fan of it enough to move it any further up um than fourth i mean it, i feel like it's pretty solid but um it does have some notable piping weaknesses um some notable weaknesses to like ground and dark um which could cause him some difficulty as the season goes on that and i'm not a fan of a team that kind of forces starmie to spin um unless he wants to run deep off flygon uh, just because you, you get predictable and starmie i think is best when it can be it, it's another one that it's, it's at its best when it can do whatever it wants so um on to number three and that is where we have tesla mouse and the charlotte b drills now um tesla has a very i like the team um it has some issues with it but i like it um, so he does have Meg he has a Mega Metagross uh, that instantly moves him up the table in, in my opinions um, and then you know he's got a the Firewater Grass a Semi Sage Rotom Wash Embor he's got the Fairy Steel Dragon of Togekiss Clefairy Mega Meta and Haxorus um, I'm not sure what the point of the Clefairy is um, he's got two forms of Hazard Control plus Zatu on a not weak on a team which really isn't weak to Hazard so he's pretty set up there um, he's got some kind of funny speed tiers um, like one out, like Mega Meta, I think when it, it Megas is, is like 110, something like that. Um, he's got the 101 of, um, do, 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 um, what was it, which is 101, I can't remember, um, like Haxorus at 95, Rotom Washu doesn't often run speed at 86, so like some very strange tiers, which could kind of go for or against him really, um, when it comes to team prep. Um, Clefairy, Donphan, and Metagross is rockers, which means that probably his, his main rocker is going to be Donphan, um, which means that Donphan is going to be kind of pressured in its role, um, being both kind of his reliable, his best sort of spinning option um, and rocker. Um, but because uh, I just I don't understand the point of the Clefairy on the team. I mean, yes, it can rock and do some slightly different things than Togekiss, but I can't off the top of my head think of a situation where you bring Clefairy when you wouldn't spring togekiss instead i guess unless you were afraid of like the ice or rock weakness um so overall um it's a fairly solid team and i like the mega metagross um that's why i've got him up this high that's that's like the biggest reason why i've got him up this high because mega metagross is scary scary stuff in this format also so are haxorus and embor but i, I really would have liked to have seen him get like sticky webs or something on the team um because he's got you know a scavalier embor haxorus um Meta, Mega Meta, who are all very, very hard hitters, um, and I think his team would be a lot scarier, and maybe even, like, further up, if, um, with the presence of webs, but, other than that, it's not bad, um, I don't, like I said, I'm not really sure about the Clefairy, but, like, the Zatu, and even, I think the Simi Sage could be, could be interesting to see, um, Simi Sage is probably the thing, which is base 101, actually, um, Simi Sage could be very interesting to see, um, I mean, I, I, a different grass, a bulkier grass type might have been nice, but then he's got lots of bulk other places, so, um, It'll be very very interesting to see um, how he uses it uh, then we move up to number two and number two I have got um, TBU um, former TBU champion uh, trip and his Dallas Staravius now
tri this these last two, I, I was almost on like I almost couldn't pick between um, because they're about the only teams that I really honestly um, struggled to find fault with. Um, Trips team like. He's got two def He's got three forms of hazard removal for three weaknesses. Rocks, fine. Um, he's got multiple rockers. Um, solid dragon feel st steel fairy core with um, Grand Bull, Megasis, and Kiron Black. Don't forget about the Kiron Black. Um, Kiron Black Megasis. It's ow. Um, he's again. He's got pretty a nice easy um, step down um, with his speeds. You know, Doug Trio, Pyro, or Zavdos, Kiron B. Um, it does drop off a little bit uh, kind of after that, but like. He's nothing in kind of those. He's got some nice kind of levels with his different speed tiers. Um, he's got plenty of bulk, uh, plenty, plenty of bulk. In fact, uh, and I liked like the Doug Trio being there um, because I think like it, it should that trapping option is very, very nice to have on his team in particular um, because otherwise Heatran kind of gives him some grief. Uh, at least his Mega says Kieran B kind of gets some grief from Heatran. Um, like. It's a solid team. Um, the one thing that he may notice is that he doesn't have a lot of reliable recovery. Um, Tangela, of course, does, but Lantern doesn't, Granville doesn't, um, Snorlax doesn't, Reuniclus does, um, and then Zapdos does, but like um, a good chunk of his wall core doesn't have, it, it's, it's bad, but without a lot of recovery, so that, whether or not that would hurt him, it's tough to say, um, but he's got plenty of offensive pressure on the team. Um, and uh, like I said, there's, there, like I had to start really fishing to try to find stuff wrong with it. Um, I'm not so sure about the lantern, the pyro pickup, but um, like it's a fast fire type. Um, but I'm just I'm not a huge fan of it in draft, just because it's kind of limited in what it can do. But then again, this is trip. He drafted an avalog and made it work. Um, but then that's you know um, I'm not trying to take that into account. But you know it it'll be this is another one. It will be very very interesting to see um, how he uses the team and Kieran Black plus Megas is with like speed support or potential trick room um, is out. His team is extremely out, um, and he's got a lot of bulk to go with it. So I mean, it's it's a pretty effective looking team if you ask me. And now we move on to my number one in this season's power rankings, and that is going to be Bluesy and his Edinburgh Knights. Um, the reason he's edged up trip is because it's just not really got a lot wrong with it. Um, the Fire Water Grass Core is solid with um, Blastoise, Frozion, and Entei. The Fairy Steel Dragon Core with Scizor, Latios, and Quo just solid. Um, four forms of hazard removal and three rockers, so like he's got plenty of options there, and his team isn't super weak to hazards, just kind of the Sneasel and take. Um, and he's got plenty of options to protect those. Um, the speed tiers are good. Um, he's got a lot above like a, a good kind of speed stats as well. Um, it's it's like the one thing um, I notice is that a physical threat which can hurt Gligar is kind of scary because he doesn't have a lot of what is natural physical bulk. Um, he's got Megalatias who can be fast or who can be defensive, but like things that are kind of standard like obvious physical walls um he's got the gligar and then like um it's kind of uh things like melting which are a bit more specially defensive kicklet can be physically defensive but like a thing like because Gli his best physical walls being gligar and gigalith who share weaknesses to water um share weakness to water isn't great um but then he does have options uh for water so like a defensive blastoise a you know a defensive megalotis they both take water attacks for days um so it's not like it's not like a big issue. That was that's me being nitpicky here. Um, but otherwise, like I really like Bluesy's team. Um, I like the Gengar pick. I like uh, most of his picks. In fact, you know he's no like unnecessary typing duplication. I think he's got everything covered pretty nicely. A nice distribution of bulk and power. Um, and all in all, like it's the reason I have him at number one is because he he's probably my favorite team and he hasn't had to make a change yet. So like. You know, th this is why he's number one in the post draft power rankings. A lot of these other teams um, have made swaps, um, but uh, he hasn't made any. And uh, at least I don't think he's made any. I don't think thing three is their maximum. Either way, um, he's got you know he's um, built a pretty strong team there, and I think um, one which he should enjoy using, um, which makes it all the more interesting. I mean, yeah, I didn't rank him number one because of that, but I think like. It just it, I like this team a little bit honestly um, th I like this team a little bit more than trips um, and this is like the draft power rankings on the teams that were like on the teams themselves um, trips I could kind of nitpick some problems out of bluesies it's it's pretty solid um, I quite like it in fact so that 
is the end of your VPL post-draft power rankings. Um, just a reminder, of course, that um, if you think I'm full of nonsense and you want to tell me so, feel free to do so in the comment section below. Um, I'm sure Sky will stick the links of all of the wonderful coaches um, down in the description, so make sure you go check every one of them out. Um, my battles will be coming very, very soon. Um, I, this will more than likely be the kind of last power rankings um, that I do um, just because when starting my new job and everything, I'm not going to have a lot of time to watch battles. Um, we'll see exactly how that plays out though. Uh, but yeah, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed and, uh, you know, if you did make sure you, you like and uh, comment down below, let me know what your favorite team is, what your least favorite team is, all of that good stuff. Um, but make sure you justify it because justifications are important. And, um, yeah, so, uh, watch this space, uh, for any future VPL uploads and um, make sure you go check out all of the coaches uh, for their battles which will be coming very very soon. So uh, with that I hope you all have had the most excellent of days and I will see you next time. Bye bye. Well wait I won't see you next time probably. I might do. That I just went into my outro. Darn it my guys. <laughs>